Mr. Speaker, I rise today because I am furious. Angry that three kids died today in Nashville, Tennessee. Angry that hundreds of parents had to cry their eyes out today, not knowing if their child would come home from school. And all of this is because politicians in this chamber that have been bought and paid for by the NRA, that put profits over people, over human lives, Cowards who wasted our time last week, passing a parental bill of rights, not giving a damn about the rights of children to be able to go to their classroom without the fear of being gunned down due to senseless gun violence. It is likely that at this moment, the next mass shooter is planning their shooting. What will this chamber do about it? And those are the passionate words from Florida Congressman Maxwell Frost on the House floor following the tragic shooting in Nashville, Tennessee, killing three adults and three nine-year-old children. Welcome back to GMA3. New details are emerging on that Nashville shooting from the victims' identities to the weapons used by the shooter. Now, this tragedy is fueling new discussions about gun control. President Biden calling on Congress once again to pass the assault weapons ban. And today, there's a spotlight on a new bill to establish a a federal office of gun violence prevention and that bill presented by Florida Democratic Congressman Maxwell Frost who is joining us now from Washington thanks thanks so much for being here with us yeah thank you so much for having me and as you know we have learned the identities of these six victims in this shooting we have three nine-year-olds three little kids and three adults in their 60s now you yourself you've called yourself you know part of generation lockdown you grew up amid several mass school shootings it's a sad reality for american kids and american families and when you see those faces now as a legislator what are you thinking about well i'm thinking about the fact that i I've, I've seen these faces right mm -hmm. we we know that behind every number there's a human and we're in a country where we lose a hundred lives a day to gun violence and to all of our parents watching everyone must know if god forbid your child died before the age of 18 the most likely reason is because they were shot to death in this country right now i i for one find that unacceptable i for one believe as a legislator i have to do everything i can to fight for a world where that's not the truth and we can have true freedom and liberty the greatest freedom of all being the freedom to live and that's what we're going to continue to fight for but when i see those photos it breaks my heart and here's the thing mass shootings make up one percent of gun violence i don't say this to diminish mass shootings i say this because this country broadly really only cares when sometimes it makes the news. And I want people to know that mass shootings happen every day all across this country, one of the greatest being in our black and brown communities on a daily basis. It is all so terrifying. Congressman, Nashville police say that the shooter used three weapons during that shooting. We saw photos of those guns, but the shooter also bought a total of seven guns at five different stores. Now, it was just last year that the landmark gun control bill was passed. Congressman, there are background checks in that law. How could some someone get their hands on seven guns with this in place. Well, actually, universal background checks are not in the Safer Bipartisan uh, Community or the Safer Communities uh, Act. Um, so we still need universal background checks. There were expanded background checks, but not universal. There are still many loopholes that exist. Um, we believe we have to have strong ERPOs, which are extreme risk protection orders, which give people in the community the ability to petition for someone to temporarily or for a while have their weapons taken away if they see something concerning happen. Florida passed this law, a weak version of it, but passed this law right after uh, the shooting happened in Parkland, Florida. It's been used over 7,000 times. And, uh, you know, as we you know, talk about data, it's, it's hard to track the shootings prevented, right? It's hard to track just how many shootings have been prevented due to these uh, laws. But just imagine where we'd be if we didn't have the few laws we do have now. We need to continue to fight. And I want to let gun owners know at home, we hear this from the right all the time. Democrats are trying to take your guns, take your guns. No, it's a, it's a bunch of BS. We're trying to save kids. We're trying to save the lives of our people. And it's not about confiscating guns from law-abiding Americans. It's about having common sense gun reform so we can live in a country where we don't have to fear our kids being mowed down by an AR-15 and dying in a pool of their own blood, which unfortunately is the reality for many kids right now. That's a really scary thought, and it's happening in our country all the time. Now, prior to this shooting, just last week, week, in fact, you introduced your very first piece of legislation. It's called the Office of Gun Violence Prevention Act. So this is a bipartisan act. If it's passed, what exactly would it do? And would it help in a situation like this, what happened in Nashville? 
Yeah, so the, gun the Office of Gun Violence Prevention Act, I believe, should have bipartisan support. It has nothing to do with gun policy, right? It is creating an office for the federal government to focus on it. And for people who don't know, the federal government currently does not have one federal office that works to coordinate among all the agencies to work to end gun violence. A lot of times after these shootings, what do you see? You see a lot of these gun violence prevention groups going to the cities, March for Our Lives, Every Town, Brady. Um, and that's great, but it's also not fair. We, we need our government to step up here. We need our government to work every day to solve an everyday problem. And so I'm hoping, because this isn't about gun policy, but it's about making an office. Gun violence is one of the least researched um, causes of death in the United States. Um, and again, where we're losing 100 lives a day due to gun violence, we need to work at researching it. So this office would help uh, aggregate the research, aggregate the data, and provide recommendations to Congress, but also municipal governments across the country on how we can curb gun violence, both in a reactionary measures, but also preventative. And I'm really a fan of preventative measures because that means nobody dies, and that's really what I think our mission should be. But we do have some data, and the CDC reported that the gun-related violence, it's the leading cause of death for children ages 1 to 19, Congressman. There have been more mass shootings in the U.S. than days in 2023. What will it take once and for all to end gun violence in this country? It's going to take a massive movement that is multiracial, multigenerational, of people coming together demanding that enough is enough. And we have large corporate interests to battle here. You look at a group like the NRA, a lot of times people call them an advocacy group. They're not an advocacy group. They're not fighting for everyday gun owners. They're fighting for everyday gun manufacturers. It's a lobbying front for corporate profits. And they have deducted that things like universal background checks and really any gun policy brings down the bottom line of these gun manufacturers and they can't stand for it. But we can't stand for the fact that we're losing 100 lives a day due to the census gun violence. So we need to work to call our politicians out. Let me tell you this, universal background checks are overwhelmingly popular to everybody in this country. Republicans, Democrats, and even NRA members. In fact, most NRA members are for universal background checks. So the question is this, if for the rest of the country, by, uh, there's bipartisan support, which means we all can come together agreeing on universal background checks, why doesn't it happen in this building? Why doesn't it happen in Congress? It's because on this issue, the word bipartisan takes a different definition, and what it means is what the NRA and what the gun lobby is okay with and we have to stand up to that. So this is an issue, yeah, I mean, there's issues of culture and et cetera, but at the end of the day, it's corporate money and people valuing profits over people, and I ran for Congress to help change that, but I, I can't do it alone. There's not one politician that's gonna save us. We all need to come together, elect morally just leaders who actually give a damn about our lives, and we'll value people over profits. As you mentioned, that bipartisan uh, support there. So I spoke with a former classmate of the shooter who told me she actually received messages from Hale saying that Hale wanted to die and warning that something bad was going to happen. Now this person immediately called the suicide prevention line who then directed her to authorities. By this time, it was too late. But again, she made those calls almost immediately. She did, it, did not ignore those warning signs, not even for a second. Also never imagining that Hale had the intention to kill children, but again, took that action right away. In your opinion, is that also part of the system breaking down here, right? That she was directed somewhere else after calling the number she was supposed to call? A hundred percent. And, you know, I'm not sure exactly what Tennessee's laws are in, in terms of red flag laws. I'm going to assume that they don't have uh, really good extreme risk protection orders. And what, when you have those laws in place, it creates a mechanism in which if you call and you report that someone is, you know, at risk of suicide or et cetera, we also have the data that shows that that same person has bought, what you said, it was seven or nine, seven guns in the past X amount of months. And it puts our government in a place where they can connect the dots. Here's the problem. The the ATF needs more money so they can digitize all their files. A lot of these files are still kept in filing cabinets. Um, Republicans, especially state legislatures, have been fighting against any sort of uh, uh, people having to register or keeping tabs on when people have really uh, unusual amounts of guns and ammunition they're buying. And I think we need to keep track of these things, just like we keep track of you when you buy a car, an automobile, to go where you're going. Okay, this isn't a radical thought. This is common sense gun reform so we can save lives. The warning signs were there and the person took action and made the phone calls, but the systems were not in place. And this is part of the reason why it's important that we pass gun legislation at the federal level. There are states with great gun laws, 
Um, and those states are some of the safest states to live in. New York City, which a lot of times Republicans like to use as a, as a talking point, has some great gun, has some of the safest gun laws, and it's the safest big city in the country to live in. Per capita, you're less likely to get shot in New York City than you are in a lot of these red states where there's no gun laws. And we have um, just so a moment we have here. To look at the numbers. Oh, sorry to interrupt you, Congressman. We have just a moment here, and I want to ask no, you this. But... It's hard to see the light in the dark right now, but Congressman, do you have any hope that we will find a, a concrete solution to make this country safer from gun violence? I do, I do. And it's because, not because of me, uh, not because of people in this building, but it's because of the people who have had enough. We saw a movement rise up after Parkland that called, that said, we call BS, and had sweeping youth voter turnout that helped flip state legislatures, that helped ensure that we elected a governing majority. And it's going to take time. Sometimes you take a few steps forward and you take a few steps back, and that's kind of the way our government works, and that's really in the history of movements. But I believe in my heart we will end gun violence within our lifetime because we must. I'm not going to give on it as a survivor. I'm not going to give up on it as a legislator, and we'll continue to do it. I think about the late Barbara Jordan. She said it right. What the people want is simple, a country as great as its promise. Part of that promise is being safe, and we're going to fight for it every day. Yeah. country as great as its promise. Congressman Maxwell Frost, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.